Welcome to Auda Amharic, everyone. This is an instruction manual for how to learn Amharic. This should be the first video, although I've made these out of order. So I'll have to make a playlist and call it either Learn Amharic or Auda Amharic. I'm still playing with that. So those of you who see this later, that won't matter to you because it will be settled, hopefully, by the time that you see this. In any event, the idea is to learn the alphabet, which is the Ge'ez alphabet or the Ge'ez script used in Ethiopia and Eritrea today. Um, historically, Amharic and Ge'ez are the, the things that the languages that used this the most, but also later on Tigrinya, Rominya, Guraginya, maybe even Harari and some of the other languages found in the Horn of Africa. In any event, I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to show you how to do the first two rows of the alphabet, and we'll take it from there. All right, sharing my screen. Ishi. The first row is called Haletau Ha. Haletau Ha. Because this is the Ha one of three ha's, and this is the ha that is used for the word hallelujah. You have no idea how that's spelled, but I might as well show it to you for now as a teaser for the future. You'll learn these three letters in this lesson, and then down the line, you'll have to learn the ya. Uh, okay, hallelujah together. Hallelujah. Often there's even a book, Ankas Halita, in the Mas'afa Zik, a section of the book, I should say, that teaches you like 15 different ways of saying this. In the Qaddasi, they say, Hallelujah. But there are 15 different ways of saying this, maybe even more that I'm unaware of. So we'll get rid of this and we'll spell these out. So this is ha, this is who, he, ha, he, he, and ho. Let's put a little space in between them. Okay. And yeah, let's do this. Let's create a new document. Okay. And we'll paste them in. So there are a million different ways of transliterating. I like the way that I do it. The Ge'ez alphabet, the Abu Gida, the Hoheat, the Fidel, whatever you want to call it, has been used by people in Portuguese, in Italian, in French, and in English. I am an American English speaker, and so I think that this is the best way to write some of these out. I'll give some alternatives here for a few of them, um, just for the record. But I think these are the best ways. We have another row here. Okay. Ha, hu, he, ha, he, he, ho. Backwards, ho, he, he, ha, he, hu, ha. So I would transliterate, meaning put it in Latin script this way. Other people do it different ways. Ha here is the same sound wise as the fourth ha. The second one makes the u sound. I think the u works to represent the u sound, but some people like the double o to make it look like moo of a cow in English. He, some people do hi for this. I prefer to do hee -E, as in one of the English onomatopoeia for laughing. He, he, he. Again, ha, h-a, ha, he. I tell my students that this is an unforgettable letter. He is how you historically write my name in Ge'ez and in Amharic. That's Henok. 
So this is Hali Tao He, and this is the fifth row, or excuse me, the fifth column. We're in the first row. And that corresponds to this right here, He, that I wrote out. He, with an E with an accent, but you could also say He, as in He, how you doing? Or He, as in a stack of He. The sixth column is He, and I always tell my students to picture someone is punching you in the gut. He, and that's the noise that you would let out as you're gasping for breath. Then finally, you have Ho, which I think is very easy. Oh, by the way, I write it H-I for He. Some people might do H-I-H. Some people do H with an upside down E or other weird E's that linguists use. I'm not a professional linguist. I'm an amateur, but I have taught many more people than some people who are professionals. So this is Ho, and I like to represent it simply with an H. So my suggestion is that you take these letters, and in fact, let me just make them bigger because why not? Uh, let's try size 16. Uh, okay, let's go bigger. Let's go 20. Oh, we can still go bigger. Let's go 24. Okay, you take these letters, okay, and you write this at the top of your page. Handwrite it. Write the Giz script here and the Latin script here, one time at the top of your page. And then write between 13 and 21 rows in snake-like fashion. You're gonna write this ha. You're not gonna rewrite the Latin script. We're not here to learn the Latin script. We're here to learn the Goethe script. So we're gonna write ha letau ha, as best as you can, imitate the script here. You're gonna write it, and then you're gonna say it, ha. Then, and you're not gonna write the Latin script. Then you're gonna write ha letau hu. Ha, the first column, is called guz. Hu, the second column, is kaib. So you're going to write out hu, and then you're going to say it. The third column is called salis. So you'll write out ha salis, he, and then you'll pronounce it. The fourth column is rabe. So you will, and by the way, these, this, these terms just mean first column, second column, third column in guz, which is how the grammar was established. You're going to write the fourth column, rabe, ha, as best as you can. This hey should be moved over a little bit. You're going to write the fourth column, ha. This is ha. This is the transliteration of ha. This is the letter ha. It's a little, it's a little diagonal here. We can, we can space them out a little bit. Let me space that out. Okay, that's better. You're going to write out ha, and then you're going to say it. The fifth column is hamas, the unforgettable letter, the letter which, which you spell henok. You're going to write out he. Notice the little wheel. These patterns will form as we go through all the letters. Then you're going to say it. Then he, he, you write it out. And then you say it, ho, write it out, and then you say it. Then you go backwards. So you went left to right, which is what makes Amharic and Giz unique amongst the Semitic languages, Hebrew and Arabic and all that jazz. They go from right to left. Well, now you're going to practice being like the other Semitic languages. You've got to play nice with your neighbors, with your Gwara So now you're going to go from right to left. So you'll write out ho on the second line and say it, huh, and so on and so forth, going from right to left. And then you'll go back and forth, ha to ho, ho to ha, ha to ho. If you can do 21 times, I recommend you do it 21 times. If you feel like you're gonna get arthritis, then don't do it 21 times. Do it 13 times, but no less than 13. And I won't say no more than 21, because you can do it 50 times. There's no limit. What you're doing is you're building muscle memory for these items. So we'll keep this here as we write out le.
So what's interesting here is that there are, um, as I said, three ha's. These are just variations of the one ha ha, which is the ha used for hallelujah. And there are two ah's. And those five rows that each have seven sounds, seven columns that each make their own unique sound uh, with, with the little variation here, have an irregular pattern that they begin with ah, and they have this repeat ah. In every other letter, the regular pattern, which begins with la, has the ah sound in the rabe, in the fourth column. But the first column is actually a. Uh, and foreigners really have to work on this the most. But a uh, and e uh should be very distinct. Remember, e uh is you're getting punched in the gut and gasping for breath. A uh is like a student, an American student, who doesn't know the answer to the question. Uh, and so anyway, the normal pattern begins here. And here, it's la, lu, li, la. Let me get my accented E here. Le, le, lo. Again, these alternatives exist, and you can use that. I don't care. If you find a better system of transliteration, um, it's not really better. You just think it's better, but you can use it. I don't mind. What I do mind is that you make sure to pronounce the letters as they are written in the script correctly. And so I'll pronounce them. This time I'll add the little flair of the melody that people often use and get stuck on and then they forget the letters. La, lu, li, la, le, le, lo. Now let's go backwards. Lo, le, le, la, li, lu, le. So same practice. Leave this at the top of your page or wherever, you know, it could be the section of the page if you're out there trying to save trees. Put it at the top of the section in which you're about to do your standards. Then you're going to write out L and pronounce L L L L and then you're gonna you're gonna write it then pronounce it L you'll write it then pronounce it and so on and so forth to La to Le to Le 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 should be distinct from L L and L differentiate them then you get to Lo. Same thing, you're gonna snake back and forth. So the first time you went left to right, only writing in guz, now you're gonna go right to left, only writing in guz and pronouncing it. As much as possible, do not look at the Latin script unless you need to. In a last case resort, call a friend <laughs> or look at the Latin script, but you shouldn't have to. You should be able to get by without it. So now we could have fun with some silly letters because you don't have a ton of vocabulary, but you do have access to something. So I have a couple of friends, Ethiopians, that are called Lili. This is their name, similar to Lily in English. My godfather, his real name is Lul Sagad, but he goes by Lulu. I also have a friend, Lulit, and I'm sure some people call her Lulu, or maybe even simply Lu. Okay, and as we said earlier, this is A. Now we take the Le, and we have Ha Le. If we want to get this Lu, then. Now we have ha le lu. You don't have ya, so you don't know how to spell it. So I'll write it out in the Latin script there. Ha le lu ya. Ha le tau ha. And this is la. Let me stop sharing. So two rows. Practice them 21 times if you're great, 13 times 
if you're lazy and practice these words, see if you could come up with any words that I didn't come up with and continue on to the next lesson.